Welcome to the Crafty Mini. Now, what do you get if you cross a cat with a ball of yarn, a wooden floor, four leaf clover, and some knitting needles? Well, the answer is a community project chosen by Michelle. So first of all, thank you for reaching out and um, giving me this idea. So this is for a birthday present. Right, so she wanted um, a painting of uh, this cat named Grace and give me a few ideas of what to put on it. So I've got the base and the miniatures has come through um, as it's 3D printed. So I'm gonna make a wooden flooring out of uh, stirrers, nice and cheap and cheerful. Um, just stealing from where I work. I'm sticking these on just with some super glue onto the base and then I'll go around and trim the edges of these just so it matches the, the round of the base. There you go. And then I'll chamfer the edges and sand them down. Now, just um, the initial figuring out was where I'm going to put the ball yarn and the four leaf clover. So I use some standing, some blue tack and things. But uh, now that I'm happy, so I'll stick the cat down. There she is. It's a really nice miniature this is. We'll do a shout out at the end for the uh, where I got them from. So I tried several things to create the ball of yarn and then I settled on, I'll do some milliput. Use these nails that actually look like um, knitting needles. Stick them into the base and then wrap the, uh, the worms of milliput round to look like a ball of yarn. And this will dry solid and it'll be, it'll be nice to paint. So here I'm now just wrapping it round in like a random shape. And this, this is an absolutely lovely project to do. It's something different. Um, after the community Q&A, you know, uh, was it cute and fluffy things? So this is definitely that. I don't think you get any more cuter, cuter or fluffier than a cat. And so yeah, just, it was a joy to paint and it was something different. Um, nothing I've actually done before, especially trying to recreate the actual pattern of the, 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 the owner's cat themselves. So yeah, absolutely fun to do. Um, and yeah, more, if any, anyone else out there has got any ideas or things that they'd like to see, um, just hit me up on either the community, on uh, the Crafty Mini YouTube page or the link provided and send me an email. Okay, there were loads of weird miniatures in that parcel you got today, so are we doing another community thing or? Because what were they for? They're not monsters. Uh, uh, yes thought. Sally, we will be doing another community project. Uh, something else has arrived in the post today that came with this cat um, for a certain um, channel. I'll be working on that. There'll be a video coming this week for that. So uh, keep your notifications on. So she wanted a four-leaf clover. You now I tried making one out of uh, some clay and other bits. I decided right, I'll carve one out of the coffee stirrers because it'd be a lot more rigid. And I've just used the ends where it's curved and cut um, a triangle in and it, it's now the petals of the four leaf clover. So I'm just gonna stick these down uh, just with some super glue. And you can see here, just a couple of dabs. And this sticks really well with the, the coffee stir as they soak it up. This is a, a Bostic, yeah, it's quite a thin uh, CA glue. And there we go, and just space these out and I just trim that last petal because it was a little bit out of shape compared to the others. And just moving all the glue around, make sure it doesn't sort of settle. And that's the so that's the final composition of the base. So we've got the ball yarn, the knitting needles, the four leaf clover, the wooden flooring, and the cat itself. And there she is. This is Grace, the cat. Right, so on to colours. So it's a, uh, the predominant colour is black. So because I'm going to wash this down to get the detail out uh, with a black wash, I'm actually starting with a really deep grey which seems counterintuitive, but when you put the wash on, it'll darken it considerably. So just base coating this now, and the whole cat gets this, and we'll work on the white patterning later. But the initial um, paint is just block out all the colors. And with the flooring, I should have really done this first before the cat actually, because I could have got around the pores easier, but so I've gone for a nice, uh, it's almost like a grayish brown, which when it's washed up with a, a sepia, It'll make all the wood pop and it'll look like wooden flooring when it's done. And just going around now, make blocking out all the colours, just like we did on the, uh, the base layer for the cat itself. And just going around the miniature using a, a, you'll see me there, switching brushes just so I can get a bit more control going around the cat so I don't go over it. And painting the actual edges that go onto the base because the rim itself again will repaint later anyway to make it stand out. So it doesn't matter at this point if I go over there. 
if uh, if you ever do anything like this and you do go over another element like for example in this the cat itself i'd just go back in with the original gray and just paint over it it's dead easy to do and yeah you can hide any mistakes you, you might have made but yeah that's that's the wooden flooring Patsy, i've got a question what is a cat is it like a little dog is that what it is because i keep it reading about cats and dogs in your uh, language no, uh, a cat is a different animal. Um, they're not the same, no. Right, so paint the four-leaf clover, just going in with some green now. And again, we'll wash this down and go back over with the base colour and, and blend it in. I'm just blocking it and going around the edges, taking my time, making sure that I don't make any mistakes. If I do accidentally go onto the flooring, I'll go back in with the brown and neaten it up. Right, so onto the ball yarn. So I wanted a nice contrasting colour with the green and the red so something bright and vibrant so I've gone in with a, a red and this will be um, brightened up again with some a couple of dry brushing layers later on so again just blocking out the colours and as before if I, if I do catch a, any other part of the miniature just neaten it up with the base colour again and this this happens before we put any washes on or anything like that just so I can get a good idea and see if it actually looks good because if, if for example if I'd have done this in say um, a brighter green painted all of it and then gone well, actually no I don't like that I could cover it up before I go into the wash phase. So here we are on the washes. So I'm using a, a black wash just on the cat. So this will darken the grey down to look more like a black, especially with the varnishing later on. And it also gets into all the crevices and it just shows off the detail that's on this printed model. And again, so even though we haven't done the white bits yet, I'm still putting this all over, let this dry, and then we'll go in and do the white details. Because the white will cover on top of this quite nicely actually. As long as it's completely dry and it doesn't mix otherwise you'll end up with a grey splodge all over your miniature right and onto the wooden flooring so this is a brown wash sepia and again this the wood soaks this up and it just shows all because it is actually wood so it'll show up all the bit, little details and things all the texture and it comes out lovely it's a really nice uh, cheap way of doing uh, wooden flooring in inverted commas um, and yeah just plast this on get up to the edges um, things like the, the bottom of the yarn I'll take my time with and around the, the four leaf clover. If I do catch it there it's okay because I know I'm going to put another layer of green on, on top anyway to make the leaves look more natural. And then into the red. So all I'm doing is on the raised areas it's, uh, it's a scarlet so it's a, almost like an orangey red and just touching these up going in and just adding on the raised, raised bit so it just it sh shows a bit more um, like layers and okay so with the knitting needles so these are actually nails um, so what I've done now is just adding in a brown just to make them look like wooden needles and these will get a sepia wash as well and then once this is varnished the paint won't chip on these and I've gone for a like a squash head I'm not sure what the technical term is but they actually look like knitting needles just oversized ones now on for the white details so the the cat has got white paws um, quite a pronounced almost like a V shape under its chin down to its belly and it goes into a line and the nose in particular has a very unique shape which I'll, you'll see later but I'm basically going in now with the white just blocking these on if it needs another coat I'll add it on when it's dry but you can see now just taking my time going in making sure the pores are white following the picture that I was given as best I can obviously the cat's not identical to Grace herself but you know we can get all the patterning right so here we go under the chin and I'm just dabbing this on so you get that randomness between the patches of fur because obviously it, it wouldn't block out like a perfect straight line but yeah just so going in there adding all the white under the chin and you'll see uh, the the uh, the wash didn't dry fully and this bit here so it did go a bit grey so I'll just wait for it to fully dry and then go in again with the white after that but just blocking it all out then it starts to come to life now it starts to uh, take shape and painting things like this, you can learn uh, patterning and colours on animals. So if you want to go and do, say, um, you're painting like a farmyard animal, a horse or a, a cow or something. In nature, you'll see that the, the patterning is random. It's not, um, they're not perfect shapes. And painting something like this is a really good practice for that. So here you see, I'm going through around the nose. Now there's some areas just under the one nostril where there's this black line. Um, on the initial picture at the start of the video, so that will I'll take I'll go back in and change that I'll paint end up painting over the nose fully and doing this like pinky color that the cat's got and Just taking my time with it 
Now and a little bit more on the belly and it's starting to dry now. And again we'll go in with more white as this dries and touch it up and just get it as bright as we can. And you can see there it's gone a little bit grey, there's a bit of wet wash still. And then the eyes have just got a slightly tinted with a bit of yellow. Again just block these out for now. Because if I need to neaten up the around the eyes with the grey again I can. And then I'll go rewash that with the black and then neaten the eyes fully and do the pupils. Yeah, so far it's looking quite nice actually. It's a, again, really fun project. Uh, it's not something I've done before. It's normally monsters and, and strange things. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. So thanks again for uh, Michelle for reaching out in the community and asking me to do this. And I hope Natasha likes it for, a, is it a 50th, I believe? 50th birthday. So I'm going in there, just knitting up around. I noticed that the cat's got more of a pronounced V, so I've just knitting up the white a little bit making sure that it matches the photo as best I can and then I'll go in quickly dab the pupils in always the hardest part of a miniature this scale to paint because you don't want the whatever the subject is to look derpy but there it is I'm very happy with this um, hope Natasha likes it happy birthday happy 50th and that is Grace um, your cat but yeah so thank you again uh, community for reaching out if there any more community projects please let us know uh, say DM us and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.